what were you thinking when you sent the text that said, eventually, I just want to get my money back? Honestly, it was the holidays. Because you filed a lawsuit two months it after was on, that text. Honestly, it was the holidays, and I was feeling really generous, and I was just kind of expecting that, oh, if I, like, take my foot off his neck a little bit more, it'll be more likely that he'll, like, get more finance and be able to pay me back. And then I texted him, like, two months later, and I'm like, hey... February. You, yeah, February. And I say, hey, do you have any money? And he just doesn't respond. You provided this text exchange mm -hmm. to the court. Why did you do that? Just to show that he was in a financially stable place. So him, you know, demanding money because he's struggling isn't really a valid argument anymore. Why is he not entitled to ask you where his money's at? No. He is, right? And my intentions were not specifically to not pay him back because he was more stable. It was more so I was still getting my life under control. But you couldn't make any payments for the month of January? Just, a, you know, a show of good faith? Like, I'm still... Even if it was $5, would you have filed this lawsuit if he paid you something? Yeah, if he hadn't ghosted me, if he, even if he'd said, hey, this is an explanation for why I'm not paying you, I might not have filed it. But he never responded at all, and so I had to file the lawsuit before I even got a response out of him. Um, how long ago... Oh, you can... Oh, no, no, just talk up here. Um, I believe it was only two days after I hadn't responded that he uh, decided to file the lawsuit. It was a week. <laughs> was it? No. Yes. All right, I'm going to open it up to my colleagues. I, I, to me, this is an accounting case, and I don't think we've really resolved the accounting yet. I brought actual accounting, yes. Okay. Officer Montana, would you grab that? So that represents the first three months of rent that appear on my bill. Okay. Uh, combine them, add... Uh, $1,100 for the security deposit, add the three months of uh, internet bill, Okay. take all that, divide it in half, subtract what he's paid me so far, and you get that number, and I'm adding an extra $100 just for, like, transportation, utilities, sorry, transportation, food, and that kind of stuff. Okay, so the amount of $2,992 that you've calculated, you calculated it based on that place you stayed, rent Every, and yeah. utilities. Rent and utilities. Dividing it by two and subtracting what you've already received from him. Yes. And then you've added only $100 for Ralph's and things like that. Yes. So even though you provided us receipts of many hundred dollars, you only decided to add 100 That's the whole friendship give and take. Understood. But after that date, you said it was... He owed you thirty four forty. Yes. My math was bad back then. Understood. And I went back and did the numbers. Okay. Your math was bad. Okay. And it looks to me like the 982 he paid you was before that email. The other large payment he made was before that email. But... He paid you a total of 500, 250, and 250 after this date. Yes. Okay. I have no other questions. Do you understand the accounting? For the current amount, to my understanding, it was about 2,400, um, give or take, that I still owed him. So yeah. the difference of $500. Right. Yeah. All right. I have nothing further. We're going to excuse the parties while we deliberate in this matter. Thank you both very much. This courtroom is now in recess. So we the next city. It's clear that the defendant owes the plaintiff money. I don't buy any of his defenses here. Uh, the question is, which figure does he owe? Does he owe okay. the amount that the plaintiff says? Does he owe the extra $100 for Ralph's? I, I would tentatively say no. Or does he owe the slightly smaller amount of $2,440? And to me, that's the right number. And I think the difference between the $2,900 figure and the $2,400 figure is the security deposit. Yeah, yeah. It's half the security deposit, right. which I think the plaintiff maintained for a very long time. He was not going to make him pay for one reason or another, maybe because he's a sucker. But then he went back and said, oh, I, wanna, I forgot about that. I want to tack it on. I, I don't think you're allowed to do that. Well, you we know, made it very clear. When I was reading the case, I put down, as you did, this is an accounting case, and I even brought ah. my little calculator, <laughs> which I didn't have to use. But, but I agree with you. I think your analysis is on point. So we're not going to be petty and tack on all the grocery bills. No, no, okay, no, no, so no, no, no. I agree. Oh, 2440, I think, is the figure. So I think the amount is 2440. Good. The difference in the $500 is the security deposit that the plaintiff mm -hmm. essentially told him he wasn't going to take, yeah. and it's the $100 for Ralph's. Great. All right, we have a verdict. We have a verdict. Excellent. Excellent.